Okay, yeah, let's get started. Um, welcome to the second session today um, about how partners can use uh, Cloud ALM as a um, delivery infrastructure. My name is David Birkenbach. I'm um, leading the global partner go-to-market team for, for, cloud, uh, for cloud ALM. Um, yeah, happy to have you here. Um, not so happy that I don't have Daniel here with me. Um, he just uh, yesterday approached me uh, and he can unfortunately not be here. Um, he's uh, on, on, on sick leave. But um, I think we somehow managed it that you still get also the input uh, that Daniel wanted to share with you. Um, so, but um, before the Daniel would anyway start, uh, let me give you some views that, that we see in, in talking with partners. Um, you know, if you would like to spread the word with information about this session, uh, you can use this uh, hashtag ALM Summit, also the disclaimer, you should be aware on that. Um, so let me first start with some, what we think, what are challenges of uh, implementation partners um, and also having a specific view or look into um, um, the tenant of Cloud LM, because this is certainly a crucial discussion. Um, also, when we later talk about how can you prepare content, and this is also what the POC um, was about. At the end, uh, we will close the session, and hopefully we'll have still some time for questions, but I'm also happy to have Chi Hao here. Uh, he's from our partner organization, and um, he talks a lot with, with other partners as well, and I think it's, it's maybe also interesting to let him give um, a summary of what he's facing and what, he, uh, what he's listening uh, from partners currently who are using Cloud ALM. So maybe this can also be interesting um, for you. So partner delivery. Um, yeah, of course, we are, we are not a partner. <laughs> you are. You probably know best. But uh, we, we think we talk a lot with partners and we try to identify what are in, in these communications the typical or the most challenges that our partners facing in, in project delivery. Um, and um, I hope you can find yourself in some of them, and I, I'm happy for any feedback also after the session. If you say, oh, there's not so, this is not true, or uh, here we, we have a different opinion. But um, yeah, due to the virtual management of projects and, and, and everything, um, it's possible to have now projects in parallel. Uh, I talked yesterday with some consultants. They have not only one, they have sometimes three or even more projects that they have to deal with in, in parallel. Um, you still act also in, in Cloud ALM as a partner in the name of the customer, which makes it then sometimes all not so easy also in the communication with, with SAP. And resource and, and capacity management is still uh, a huge topic. Um, you still have the, if the, the, the issue to deliver your projects more efficiently, yeah, uh, more predictable, um, and your customers or your, your, your consultants um, work even more virtual. Yeah? So faster hop on, hop off from one project to the other. Um, still, you have the cloud challenge. You're guiding the customers from the cloud or from, uh, from the on-prem into the cloud world or from any other uh, legacy system into this uh, new cloud and, and uh, requirement. Um, and we, from SAP, don't do it better. We continuously provide you with new updates, new namings, unfortunately, new bundles um, and uh, documentations and so on. So staying up to date here with all this information and tools and guidances that we have is certainly also a challenge um, that we um, identified at, at, at partner side. But then in the project, you need the appropriate transparency. In the best case, real time, so not uh, collecting thousands of excels, but real time uh, in the discussions um, with, with steering committees or with your stakeholders, with the customer, being up to date, know where we are and, and what is my project currently doing. And last but not least, um, you as a partner would like to differentiate yeah, from all the other competitors down there in the market would like to, to convince um, the customers with your USPs. And if you're too much standardized or only in the standard, then it's, uh, it makes it more difficult. 
And the last one, I think that's what we from Cloud ALM specifically identified is that smaller customers gave up. I mean, they are now in a cloud environment. They gave up their IT responsibility and with that also a lot of monitoring functionalities. So we see more and more system integrators are facing the situation that they have to provide a kind of operation services as well. Yeah. And uh, that's something that we, we see also in Cloud ALM and we hope that we have the appropriate um, solution and possibilities um, for partners here. So how can now Cloud ALM improve and, and help on, on these uh, um, challenges? I mean, first of all, keeping the quality high. That's, that's what, what, is, what is relevant. This is what's driving the partners and, of course, also um, the, the customer projects. So here with Cloud ALM, I mean, hopefully most of you know, we have this task-based project management. Uh, we have a strong focus on, on testing with regression tests, integration tests, uh, and, and different uh, test capabilities. And, and that was also what made us strong in the past was um, the deployment. Yeah? So avoiding that any wrong transportations or wrong orders in transportations are happening. And this is uh, the orchestration of the deployment. All these things are keeping quality high. On the other side, the efficiency that you would like to achieve with, um, within your projects. And efficiency comes along with standardization. So as more you can somehow standardize your project delivery, the, the more um, you, can, uh, you can be more efficient. And, and this means um, in the delivery method, so bring your o either use our Activate, but you can leverage Activate with your own tasks and your own methodology. Yeah? Um, defining clear tasks and responsibilities in the projects. Um, and making, and this makes it possible that you can really support several projects in parallel because you have a standardized procedure. So pro uh, team members or consultants can go from one project to the other. And if they're all using the same project tool, it's definitely easier and quicker for them to step in, to take over responsibility, to know where, you, where they are and continuously work. So this gives you definitely here more uh, possibility on, on standardization. Compliance is a huge topic. I mean, um, we yesterday learned that we will go also in a regulated environment. Yeah? So we are not that, ye not that yet, but al already the, the commitment that this is a, for, for us also a strong um, topic on the roadmap shows that this compliance and regulated environments is important. But even without a regulated environments, you need a good documentation, one central place, that was all valid already in Solution Manager, saying this, this single source of truth where you have your documentation, where you have uh, all your processes bundled with the requirements, bundled with the test cases, bundled with the, uh, with the transport. So a traceability really from the process down into the uh, technical objects. This gives you here the full uh, compliance also for any um, uh, controls. Flexibility also in the way how we do projects. I mean, this is not new. We did it with Focus Build already in the last years. Uh, it was very well adapted from, from the partners and the, and the projects, even the big projects, accepting that an agile project management is set. Yeah? So you, you, we don't push anymore the go live dates. Yeah? We say this is the dates are fixed. The content might have to be changed. Yeah? And we only what is, what is well tested goes in, into the next. But also each Agile project requires a kind of guidance. Yeah? Needs workflows, needs documentation, how you should do things. I mean, Agile does not mean uh, I can do whatever I want and if I'm ready, then it's nice. Yeah? So the, the opposite is the case. Yeah? It's, it gives you possibility to be flexible, but it gives you also uh, a strong need to follow certain rules and, and, and certain procedures. Actuality. That means we would like to provide you with latest information, yeah? any update, any accelerator, any best practice document, and all of that should come to you via this one central channel. Yeah? You don't have to check in the, in the process navigator or wherever. So uh, the Cloud ALM will be the face or the facing tool uh, to the customer and to you, and you as partner, you are managing it. Yeah? If we are honest, who's using Cloud ALM in the projects, 90% are the partners are using it. 
course, you have the, the users from the business in there for doing their tests and, and, and uh, discussing in the FIT2 standard workshops and so on. But the main drivers are the implementation partners. So you are the responsible and, and users of, of Cloud ALM. Transparency, I said already, we have embedded in Cloud ALM many dashboards and traceability tools where you can see then uh, from, as I said, process level down to test case level or even down to the, to the objects in the transports, um, out of the box uh, traceability. Um, and you can manage your projects by uh, exceptions. Yeah. That means you really, I'm, I remember still in focus build times, we had projects, they were only looking on the dashboards and talking in their weekly project management, proje uh, project management uh, meetings only about the exceptions. Yeah. All the rest, everything that was green, it's green, fine, go ahead. Yeah, we, we, look into the, we look into the exceptions, and this is what you could do with, an, with a, a strong usage of Cloud ALM. And last but not least, definitely a, a winning point against our, our own past with Solution Manager, simplicity. Yeah? The access of the tool, getting the tool, um, then learning how to use it, it's all one, one UI experience. Um, and currently, it's still easy for everybody to, to know what to do in, in the tool. So I think that is also a big chance um, to have the right tool in the, in the project delivery for the project teams. So what are now the specific requests that we also see from a, from a partner on using a Cloud ALM tenant based on all of these requirements? We see that partners have a need um, to position Cloud ALM to position themselves and how they are or how you are using Cloud ALM, how you are using your projects, convince customers that you are working here close with SAP based on SAP recommendations. Um, and but you still can demonstrate your USP, meaning bringing in your own maybe methodology, your own best practice experiences. Yeah. So not only saying yes, I'm committed to Cloud ALM, but saying, yeah, I'm committed to Cloud LM, and we have added something on top of it. This is our brand, yeah? And bring that. And to do this, you need an authoring environment. You need um, an, a tenant, you need a Cloud ALM, where you could, um, yeah, build or, or create your own content, yeah? That's what makes your USP true. Um, we will later see from, from the POC that we did, um, how they started to do it, because they didn't want to start from scratch. They said, we do it in one project, and we reuse what we did there and take it away for the next project, or maybe take it away for a template that we are building. Yeah. So, And this is what, what Daniel will, will talk about later on. And then what you need to do is as well as training. Training for your own people so that you have the skill, that you, that you know how to use the tool, you know the latest features that are available, um, but maybe also um, train your uh, the, the project teams already in an early stage. Yeah? So training, experience, exploring the tool, I think this is definitely also one use case step that we see for such a Cloud ALM tenant. And then we are going deeper in the extension. Yeah? If you, maybe you don't want to try any extent or every extension directly in the productive tenant from your customer. Today you would have to, you are working in the tenant of your customer. But if you would like to build an extension or try out an integration, um, maybe it's more helpful to do that first in, in your own environment. Yeah? So this is, this is also a strong um, use case that we see here. Um, and yeah, last but not least, um, the need or the request that you have also a transparency across several projects. I think that is something um, that we maybe cannot cover in a an, in an single tenant, but that can be covered with our APIs and our um, KPIs that can be extracted out of all of your customer tenants. Yeah, you could, if you have 10 projects in parallel, you can use these APIs, extract all the project status, uh, number of processes open, test cases uh, in failure or whatever, these KPIs into a central dashboard and then say, okay, uh, here is my central view about all of my projects. Yeah. We don't deliver that out of the box, 
but we deliver all the APIs and KP for these KPIs so that you can easily stick together and build your own dashboards in Analytics Cloud or any other reporting dashboard. So in a picture again, what would such a partner managed tenant look like? Um, as I said, it's a, a tenant that you own. It's not the one that is, is used um, um, at the, at the uh, customer side. Um, and still, that's the one at the customer side is where the main project activities will happen. I think this is no doubt about it. Yeah, But having a tenant for you as a partner, parallel to it, where you can do your work, your preparation, um, that's something that we would, would uh, clearly recommend. And here are just, again, these, these use cases here. Yeah? So having such a tenant for preparing own demos. Of course, you can use the public demo system, but that's a public demo system, right? Everybody has access to it. You would not build your own demo cases there. Yeah? You, if you would like to convince, then you build it in your own landscape. Yeah? Um, and for, for monitoring, which is, of course, not so easy to demo because you need connected systems and some monitoring data. We are aware on that. Um, we had already discussed about the idea to um, provide to, to you um, this demo data generator. So we're using that to also today for our public demo system where we can produce then uh, automatically some, some monitoring data. And uh, we are currently in discussion if we somehow offer that also for partners who would like to build a demo environment in, in their own landscape. And then this here is our content template. Yeah, As I said, bringing your own uh, knowledge into, into uh, uh, the implementation with typical standard test cases or with BPM and graphics about your specific uh, industry knowledge um, or own, uh, own task roadmap maybe not own, but on top of activate, yeah? remove the ones you think they are not necessary, put the ones that you think are, are more relevant, and so on. Or maybe a common requirement list. Setting up an S4 system in public requires probably 150 standard activities in CBC that you have to do, but you have to do them, right? And to manage them later on, you need to have requirements going into user stories, going into test cases, and so on. Why not building up an, an, an a bunch of these standard common requirements already, yeah? instead of doing this in every project again and again and again? This is what we see as a golden template and want to give you the chance to build something like that. And then the others like trial and training and extensions. So coming now to this little sad part on that, currently you, have, you can have such a cloud ALM tenant if you are also a customer of an SAP solution, meaning you have an enterprise support contract or any, any cloud subscription, which is, I think, in 90, probably 90% of all partner cases, that's fine, because they can use cloud ALM, and um, they have anyway a, a BTP license, uh, a developer license, or are using any other SAP solution. So we did not have many complaints here, because mo most partners just have access to such, an, uh, to such a tenant. You can unfortunately not have a separate or a second one with the same account, um, because today it's only one cloud ALM per, um, per, per account. And this is what we would like to change, because the other 10% of partners are in the situation that they would like to use their cloud ALM for themselves, for their productive environment, for whatever, using it for their internal projects and so on and not for building templates, trial, demos, and so on. Yeah. For them, we next year have the option that they ca these partners can subscribe a second tenant of Cloud ALM, and then they can have separated, say here, this is my Cloud ALM that I'm using as a partner or as a customer, and this is my Cloud ALM that I'm using as a partner to prepare my activities for my rollout. Good, um, and therefore, quick summary. What we are doing in the public demo is, yeah, let's say first positioning, first pre-sales, and exploring the latest features. That's typically in the public demo system. In the customer tenant, we do the main project. 
Yeah, design, build, test, deploy, no doubt about it. We also help customers to integrate their third-party solutions or any BTP services and so on. We typically should not leave the project before we have set up at least the monitoring, no matter if you are delivering monitoring services, but at least helping the customers to set up the, the, the system so that the monitoring is at least active. Yeah. If you provide then monitoring services, that's, that's up to you. And you can use it for the collaboration, like built-in support, and uh, we are working on an HPI integration. I mean, HPI is this partner tool uh, in SAP. Some of you maybe also might, might use it, um, and we will work on an integration so that the data is, is transferred there. So what is now happening in a partner-owned cloud ALM tenant? And, and keep in mind, this is what I said, the additional one comes next year. Currently, it's the one, the only one that you have is, is the one as a customer. Build your own demos and training, so not only the, the existing ones. Yeah? Create your templates and use export and import functionality to bring it into your projects. Try your BTP integrations yeah? or build even own extensions. We learned tomorrow in the Almaton, some partners did it. They have great ideas. They extended ALM processes with, with their own uh, codes and, and solutions. So all of that is meant to be done in the future more in your own tenant than in the one from the customer. And um, yeah, where does it lead to? I mean, the dotted lines here is that what will come, a little also a roadmap slide. Of course, we will do more in the cloud ALM tenant. We will provide more APIs. Yeah? In the previous session, uh, for those who could not participate, I showed what we have already, but also clearly what is on the roadmap, yeah? like the BPMN graphics, upload, and, and things like that will come soon. So more APIs are, are to come. And um, we will also go more in AI use cases. Is that me? It's probably me. Maybe what? No, uh, on the other side. I try not to move too much. I'll put it here. Let's see. Um, AI use cases, that is down the road as well for us. Yeah. And then, uh, as soon as we will work closer with our transformation suite approach, like integration of Linaix, Tricentis, uh, Signavio, Enable Now, and so on, we also see that on top of this partner-owned tenant, it should be possible then that you also use these solutions. Of course, they are licensed, yeah, but we will find bundles where you maybe can then use your partner-owned cloud ALM tenant together um, and integrations with these tools. At least this is definitely our um, approach that we would like to follow. And last, and this is, keep that in mind, this is not decided yet, I also told that in the previous session, is if we really think about bringing a partner delivery cloud ALM tenant, so an, a tenant that you can use to distribute to your customers. Um, I'm open here for any requirement and discussion. So currently, honestly, we don't have yet enough um, arguments to really take this huge effort to make a split code and deliver a partner-specific tenant, because that would what it means. Yeah, we Here, this is all one code line, customer, partner, this is a cloud solution. If we go this path, we would have to open a separate code line only for partners. And today, the arguments are not yet strong enough to really take that effort, but I'm open to go in this discussion, so if you have clear demands which help me in deciding that, let me know. Good. So what have we done um, just recently is um, we, we started for this specifically for this template approach. We did a POC with the company Cpro Industry, and um, they, or maybe Daniel can explain himself better, but they wanted to extract information from one project and would like to use that in the other. So therefore, they, they called it reduce, reuse, recycle. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a song, if I remember right. So, but, but Daniel will, will explain that later on. Um, but we would like to go further. Yeah? We would like maybe to, to do a golden template. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not we, we are offering here the APIs, but we are still looking for 
partners who would like to do it, who would say, yes, I have content. Help me in building such a template, uh, because that's what I would like to use in the future in my projects. If that's the case, please approach us. Um, we would look forward for such kind of POCs in the next months. Or if you would like to build such a dashboard, yeah, getting the KPIs from different customers or from different of your customers into one central dashboard, let me know. Or if you are a typical system integrator and you would like to build a possibility that you get notified about monitoring alerts and maybe provide services for your customers to, to provide them operations. Yeah? If, you, if you're doing that, great, then let me know because uh, we would be very interested to hear your story. If you're doing it not yet, also can approach me uh, because then we can think if you would like to go that path and how we can help you. Good. With that, I, um, yeah, as I said, Daniel cannot be here. We did yesterday evening a short uh, meeting. He said, okay, he can at least talk, uh, even if he cannot be here. So um, we have now the, the chance anyway to listen to him, what he wanted to um, talk about this POC and uh, which experience he made and what his outcome out of this POC would be. And if you don't mind, I just... Um, share the video with you so Daniel still can uh, talk to us. I think one more click and then it should start. Hi, this is Daniel. Um, I'm presenting the part PSC Reduce, Reuse, Recycled, brought from a very well known songwriter in Australia. So very well Warm welcome for, um, to, to colleagues that, that are attending um, from overseas. So I'm Daniel Müller from CPRO. Um, today I'm reduced to an online mode um, because I'm, I'm quite sick, but um, I, I wanted to stick to, to my promise to, together with David, um, present this, um, these results of this POC that are all about um, the question behind what is your motivation to use a Cloud LM for your customers? And um, this, this your motivation um, has a threefold dimension, a very personal one, me, Daniel, what's my everyday motivation, my company's motivation, and all your partner's motivation, and SAP as well. My one is making customers happy by understanding their requirements and implementing them together. As I said, from a very personal, very, very personal viewpoint, there is one customer that we want to make happy and crafting is not my, my favorite one. So I borrowed um, a template as we are used to in, in this field. So that was a, that was a quick one, a, a good one. And my wife came in and said, okay, um, if this is uh, going that way, why not to bake a cake? Um, I saw one that could, could like look like this one. And I said, oh my God, um, how, how could I do this? So um, in other words, from a very personal viewpoint, um, this is a one-to-one -one activity. It's solvable. If we turn this around into a company's viewpoint, there is hopefully more than a one-to-one -one, um, connectivity. That is, you have hopefully more than one customer. So the, the next one, the next question behind is, can you deliver not only one but many customers and our answer your answer might be you can deliver them by the use of a scalable standard standardized solution or approach therefore if we use this 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 um metaphor a reduce reuse recycle because we want to use or reuse um elements objects in order to speed up the process to be as scalable as possible And um, so, so the ready-made, the ready-made cake um, that is shown here on the upper left-hand side, um, there is the question: How how easy is it for you to build this one up? How fast you can do it, um, or how do you do it? And how do others? Because that's the most asked question to me when I'm at a customer: How do others do that? So you need a solid ground or a sound ground um, in order to speed up a process. With a reference, 
to the cloud ALM or ALM um, in common. That is, we have solid ground in the sense of sub-activate roadmaps, sub-process content, sub-standard test cases. They are enriched. Um, they are enriched by toppings, by ornaments, by customized decorations. Realized and supported by the use of subcloud ALM in the sense of um, features, functionalities to support your process recording, to support your project management, your test management, and the deployment of the solution. Until we have the final one, a combination of a sound crown that is capable and some ornaments, some customized elements um, that are very um, specific to your customer in order to have a happy one by the use of the cloud ALM. And assuming this half finished, so to say Cake is the best possible scalable sub cloud ALM project. Consisting of the aforementioned building blocks, we analyzed in the context of this POC in how far sub cloud ALM supports the reusability of a project within one tenant to duplicate or to yeah, set up new projects, one or many. And the same applies to, we analyze in how far subcloud LM supports the reusability of the components um, across tenants. Um, further on, mapping reusable or to, so to say recyclable content types to project phases means in the design phase where it's all about process management and documentation, everything is about processes. The following content types um, we focused on, process scopes, custom processes. The build phase that is mainly about projects and tasks, project execution and tracking, it's on the one hand about methodology, where we had a look at projects, roadmap activities stemming from subactivate and project tasks and their subtasks as well, as well as requirements and user stories as a further task type. In the test phase, so we left out the deployment phase, we focused on test cases, manual ones, and automated ones. And now the drum roll. So it's about now as we know the content types on the upper left hand side, there's the first one referring to processes. Um, we narrow down the use cases to those content types in order to check if the use cases are supported by those content types. That is, use case number one with the reference to processes is I want to reuse my process flow and or diagrams in the cloud ALM. It is solved by the use of an API um, related to custom processes. I want to reuse my process documentation in subcloud LM. Actually, as, as far as I know, as far as we know, as far we analyzed, is not supported at this moment. I want to reuse my process scopes, their processes, maybe substandard best practices or custom ones, documentation and test cases included in subcloud ALM is supported by an API related to scopes. That includes the processes and on the other hand, test cases have to be uploaded, downloaded manually. Documentation, as we've seen in point one in point two, is not supported at this point in time. With a view to methodology. Use case number one is I want to reuse my projects, my entire ones in subcloud LM is supported by the use of the corresponding project API. I want to reuse single project tasks or and or entire roadmaps, partner roadmaps 
but Cloud LM is input, for example, implementation projects, maintenance projects is supported by the corresponding task API. Besides, you can down upload your tasks or you can copy paste them within one tenant at this point in time. With the reference to requirements, we have this two additional task types requirements, user stories. There's the first one, use case number one, I want to reuse my requirements in sub cloud LM as an anchor and then their related processes or process flows, project subtasks, test cases, teams, roles and tags included. So the, the, the anchor is the requirement with all other um, um, objects, content types and reference included. So this is solved by the corresponding requirements or task API. You can down upload requirements or you can copy paste them within one tenant at this point in time, except test cases as we saw in the example earlier. Then a requirement a use case we often encounter is I want to create a local document that is a blueprint in the end, the scope, gap description um, based on selected requirements created in, in SubCloud LM as an, so to say, attachment to an offering. Actually, um, not solvable with, with, with an API or, or something else we found out. Um, with relation to test cases, I want to read my manual test cases. As we heard earlier, down an upload of test cases or copy paste of um, test cases within one tenant um, in order to map them to different test planes is possible right now. I want to read my process flow information during manual test case creation sub cloud um, that is. Um, customers approach us. Um, we have two, three customers that extensively use the process model within SubCloud ALM, and they ask us for more support in um, deriving test cases from six, 700 custom processes. So a navigation or some, some hints about operators um, process um, incorporated information might help to, to quicker um, um, derive um, the, the test cases from the process scopes. Um, but we don't see any, any solution at this time, except um, two monitors side by side. That's a solvable way, um, of course. I want to reuse my test plan in SubCloud LM. Might be a good one, um, but not solved at this point in time. So we, we now further narrow down um, the maturity um, of this um, yeah, solution of SubCloud ALM in supporting our use cases with the reference to API support only. Why? Because we want to hyper-automate the deplication of projects of, of content types in order to scale quite quickly and massively. So API support is here the question. It's just a further focus on this. Um, on the left hand side, the use cases related to processes, yeah, very well supported. Um, diagrams are supported actually um, in the sense of SVG, SVG files um, in addition uh, with, with text information, entire process flows you, you can't um, um, exchange except um, in the in the in the realm of an entire scope. Then it is of course possible if you copy paste the entire scope by the use of the corresponding um, scope API, then um, these are best practices as well as your custom processes are um, yeah, duplicated. Um, process documentation not solved. Um, with the sense to, I want to reuse my process scopes, their processes, documentation, and test cases included. Um, it's solved by the API, except documentation and test cases. That's, that would be nice to have here further support. All use cases with, with um, yeah, relation to, to the methodology, to, to projects are supported quite well. Um, 
with reference to the requirements as well as we see this as a very special one, but um, asked by, by every of our customers, but could be delivered afterwards. Um, with regards to test cases, we see a bit of work ahead, but um, very good. You can down upload the test cases. You can copy them within one tenant, but it would be nice to, to have there the API support. I might have seen something on the roadmap. Um, would be great um, to have this delivered or explained by Rainer in the, in the realm of, of the ongoing um, summit. Use case with relation to white spaces, so to say, that is feedback requirements based on white spaces um, focused on our use cases um, that are supported by um, APIs. That is the first one. It would be great to have a custom process API version 2 or enhanced, reloaded, whatever, um, that is BPMN compliant and interoperable, that, that supports an interoperable data exchange format, not only SVG and text. That would be great. Um, might have seen this on the roadmap, but once again, this is really um, a topic we should we should focus on as SAP, we as a partner, because this this would really strive um, and and accelerate the adoption of cloud LM massively. Document API would be great because I really like the feature. It's very handy, but um, therefore we, we at least step one, please provide a copy paste functionality uh, or down upload, except the Excel file so that you can. Um, in the manner of the test cases, just copy paste uh, similar documents. Um, the API might speed up the process as well. Um, with regards to test management, the, the, the a test case API might be very, very good quick win. In addition to not really related to APIs, test assignment to test cases and sequences would round up um, the test management experience. Also there, I've seen something on the roadmap, but it would be great to have this in this year or Q1 next year delivered. Um, the business blueprint generation, probably a partner or US SAP have a solution on this, would be great um, to have um, based on requirements, um, um, a blueprint generator um, as an attachment um, to an offering so that the final scope of the project is not just only stored within the Cloud LM tenant. You never know. Um, then copy pass test planes would be great because this would speed up a process in a project I'm involved in as a yeah, um, project leader where we have many, many test cases, many, many test plans. And I imagine that this functionality would really, really help us to, 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 um, provide more speed and, and, and ease of use in the project. Next steps, um, we are striving for C for one template or working together with you as a partner with SAP towards a roadmap um, to partner tenant, so to say. Uh, why do I say it? Um, because the solution, not just slides, because, but in the realm of 20 minutes, it's quite um, challenging to present everything. So everything I wrote down in the slides, you can see, watch, read during your session on Wednesday um, and afterwards, but everything has been implemented in the way of a console-based local implementation. Right now, the copy-based reusable content, entire projects uh, with the content types we saw earlier. Um, with the available APIs within the CPRO customer sub cloud, sub -cloud ALM tenant and across, so that we really we could really achieve the, the goals we, we set up um, earlier. Now we are already working on the next step that is transforming this console based implementation into a BGP based one um, so that we as a partner can deploy or build up in the first step a C Pro one template um, where we could um, copy paste or 
distribute um, parts of it or entire um, um, process streams or information um, to project teams internally or to customers externally. By exploiting as many APIs as possible um, to make what the customers happy. First preview, you all may know this screen. Um, the BTP based implementation um, aims towards um, functionalities to copy paste entire projects um, with scopes and related to scopes, um, selecting, drilling down to um, even um, not the entire scope, but um, parts of it, so that you really, while copy pasting your project, can select or deselect um, um, the scope or redefine it um, on the way. The same applies to, to tasks um, that we want to um, copy paste as well, and their references to, um, to each other or other object types like um, processes. So many thanks for your attention. Um, really appreciate it to sit alone and um, you have the party. Um, ho hopefully seeing you next year and um, wish you all the best. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, just a quick remark. I mean, the, if you wonder the cheesecake thing in the beginning, I mean, he, he just told me that um, he, he did a f the day before with his uh, uh, his son um, this cooking or this this baking experience, and he was so triggered from it that he wanted to include that in in, in his uh, session. So, just if you were wonder what what was this uh <laughs> the cake in the beginning, uh, but I liked it. Good. Um, yeah. And now we are almost at the end. I hope you give us another five minutes because um, we have um, we skipped that part. Uh, but we have a Chi Hao here. Uh, I think this is also uh, nice to have him here. And I wanted to give him also a chance to maybe talk a little about his experiences and what he mainly got on feedback from partners. So uh, um, it's only the last part and then we, you are released for the lunch. But I hope you give us this another five minutes. Thank you. Yes, yes. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so thank you, David. Uh, that was really fantastic in presentation. So my name is Chi Hao Huang from the Partner Solution Adoption Team. Uh, yeah, let me just quickly introduce what uh, our uh, organization uh, does. Uh, so basically, we are partner-facing organization, and we are doing enablements regarding the different cloud solutions. Yeah, And for me, my focus is s Public Cloud. So we are doing a lot of s Public Cloud, and also, I mean, private cloud as well, implementation, enablement in terms of, let's say, using SAP uh, Cloud ALM. So that's why I'm here uh, to talk about some uh, of the feedback that I just collected by interviewing, let's say, ad partners, and also to give you some insights about this. So basically, you can see that, okay, uh, yeah, these features or the advantages, more or less, you are aware, yeah? So I just want to give you an idea about, yeah, what the, the partners actually says. Um, before I really begin with the contents, let me just ask a quick question. So how many of you are, let's say, implementing Esfahana public cloud or either, either, uh, or either private cloud? Please raise your hand. Okay, see quite a lot, good. So firstly, the plug and play. Uh, yeah, I have to admit that it is really easy to use Cloud LM. So based, my, based on my own experience, so before we have uh, these on-prem solutions, which I was also, let's say, these on-prem uh, consultant, and back then we have to onboard one full-time uh, consultant just for solution manager. Yeah, and even after some months, that a customer are still complaining. Okay, yeah, uh, solution manager is a little bit difficult to use, and I have to admit that it's also difficult for me. But let's say for this uh, cloud AOM, so we are actually quite easy to onboard all the users. So. For example, in my, uh, let's say, the GIX workshop, yeah? so that's Go Live Experience Workshop, especially for the s Public Cloud. So we are teaching partners how you can run an s project with SAP Cloud LM. And even just, let's say, yeah, within one hour of introduction, 
and then I gave them also, let's say, another hour to practice. So every partner, yeah, every partner are able to do the exercises. So somehow they already have a basic understanding or even some kind of advanced expertise in Cloud ALM after one hour of training. Yeah? So you can imagine that that's really easy and it is also quite uh, yeah, easy for them to go back and train their own teams. And I also get one feedback from a partner and yeah, she just says yeah, they should have used Cloud ALM earlier because after some while they realized that yeah, this tool is so great, so easy, but somehow they could have used it earlier to save some budget. Yeah? So that's the message here. Then about the flexibility, I also got some feedback from partners. They are just uh, not really using uh, Cloud LM for end-to-end -end implementation, but maybe they have smaller projects. Let's say, yeah, some customers need uh, some testing, uh, yeah, to be done by the partners, or they just want some monitoring. So we actually do see some partners taking all these parts. Yeah, and since Cloud LM, that's quite comprehensive. You also have the testing orchestration uh, capabilities, and also the monitoring. So it's quite, uh, let's say, useful to uh, yeah, just to tailor the solution for your own uh, customers' uh, use cases. Um, and also flexibility in the defining projects. So you might be aware that in Solution Manager, you have, let's say, a lot of different functions. And uh, when you use, for example, in Cloud AOM, you have this tag management, yeah? Meaning that you can actually create some tag and then assign it to some requirements or some uh, test cases. And from there, you can easily track all the different uh, yeah, entities based on the tag. So that's quite useful. And I do see that a lot of partners are utilizing these functions for their uh, reporting purpose. Then, out of the box. So you might be aware that we have this SAP Activate uh, yeah, seamlessly embedded in the Cloud AOM solution. And we also see that some partners, they are still running projects with Excel. Yeah, so you can imagine that we have so many tasks from Activate methodology that you can you know, download from the Roadmap Viewer and put that into an Excel sheet and then run the project with this one. And yeah, I mean, projects are could be months or even years. In that case, so, what you have, all the tasks are static. Yeah? So you can imagine that we are running an Azure project, but somehow you are using a static Excel file, which is not uh, making sense and also not useful. But let's say if you run the project with Cloud AOM directly, then you always get the latest content from Activate Methodology. And this is something that uh, partners are saying that that's quite perfect and easy to use. Then collaboration. Uh, we see that a partner uh, are actually taking a project after uh, the customer having the best line activation service from SAP. Yeah? So they have a small, uh, I mean, for the, for the best line activation service, that's actually a, a small fixed scope service that they ordered from SAP. Okay, so after this best line service, the customer has a small scope, and then they move to the partner for the further implementation. And what the issue was that, uh, I mean, the collaboration and also the communication between yeah, our SAP internal team and also the partner was not perfect. Yeah? So, uh, I mean, between the handover, they didn't communicate what has been done and what has not been done. So there were a lot of double, double works and also, you know, just cost a lot of time and money. And somehow, I mean, the partners is using Cloud ALM. But luckily, our internal team didn't really use Cloud LM. So there was a, a little bit mismatch over there. So yeah, I mean, they said that, okay, if they could, you know, onboard also our SAP, if, you know, all the users and also our SAP internal team to a kind of collaborative platform, which in this case is Cloud LM, then it would be easier to align all the tasks, yeah, instead of just having a lot of double works and, you know, cost a lot of time and money for the partners, uh, for the customers. And lastly, innovation. So, yeah, you know that, you know, uh, yeah, the new features are yeah, being uh, pushed to the cloud every day and also even, yeah, bi-weekly you have a lot of new, new things. And interestingly, so I'm having a lot of these 
workshops with uh, partners. And uh, before the workshop, I, I was just checking the, you know, what's news, what are new functionalities in Cloud LM. Uh, and then when I really do this workshop, so there was a, a partner asking, hey, yeah, do you have this kind of you know, card, yeah, card view regarding uh, the task uh, management? Yeah? And somehow I checked, yeah, I mean, just beforehand. So it was quite, let's say, yeah, released maybe last week. Yeah? So you have this card view yeah, to move from one to the other to say, yeah, this is in process or this is incomplete. So it's actually, yeah, it's actually there. Yeah? And this yeah, you know, somehow amazed me and surprised me because you can see that how fast these innovations are being shipped uh, to, uh, to, the, to the customers. And I mean, in that case, my partner is asking, and then after some, some weeks or yeah, some days, then you got uh, this new innovation. And lastly, you, know, you also know that uh, yeah, this mainstream maintenance is going to end, and uh, you have that in 2027. So uh, yeah, the message here will be just uh, if you haven't started using Cloud LM, then I would suggest really start using it because time is money. And if you are using that, then just have fun with this uh, tool, yeah? Thank you very much. Thanks, Chi Hao. Um, yeah, also a thank, big thank to you that you uh, stayed with us, uh, be patient. Um, I will stay here for another few minutes, so if you have directly questions, we can, we can talk about that here at the desk, no issue. Uh, but if you would like to discuss a little broader or have more topics to discuss, I really would like to invite you tomorrow. There is a so-called partner influencing session. It's uh, down there next to the bar room. And um, there we have a half an hour full time and where we can discuss about your topics in the round. Um, if you don't have any topics but just want to be interested what others have or uh, if nobody might have questions, then I have prepared some nice polls with our Mentimeter tool. And uh, yeah, I would have definitely questions to you and you can help me understanding the partner needs better. Um, so therefore, I appreciate if you come there again and um, we can discuss a little more. So having said, thanks a lot. Enjoy the lunch and see you next time. <laughs>